Namaste everyone. In this video today, I am going to talk of a very important aspect of marital life. That is extramarital affair or connection with more than one partner. Also, you can say this is more than one marriage. So technically speaking, these three combinations are different. More than one marriage is a different stuff. Multiple partners is a different stuff. Extramarital affair is a different stuff. My differentiation between extramarital and multiple partner is having multiple relationships before marriage, then getting married, then there is a break in marriage. And then person instead of doing second marriage goes on to have relationship with people without having any commitment. So that is more than one multiple. That is what I am referring as multiple relationship. Other than that extramarital and more than one marriage you already know. Regarding more than one marriage, there are many combinations written in many classics. Few of them work, few of them also don't work. Not going into that, I am specifically known for practicing pure Vedic astrology without mixture of anything, without mixture of anything which is outside the domain of Vedic astrology. And also known for the techniques that are my self-researched that I have developed myself based on my understanding of astrological classics, which give good results. More than 98% or 99% accuracy also. In this particular <clears throat> manner, whenever it is a topic of more than one marriage, one principle I teach that I call is the principle of multiplicity. This I have been seen this I have been teaching since the day one of my teaching career. I think in my first course that I did in 2018 also I taught it. The principle of multiplicity is very simple. Retrograde planets and exalted planets are multiplied by three. Planets in own Rashi, planets in Mulatrikon and planets which are Vargottam in same Rashi and in same Navamsha are multiplied by two. As there is multiplication, there is also division. So debilitated planets and combust planets are divided by two. What do you understand by the principle of multiplication? Simply saying whenever the lord of any house, this is related to house lord. Whenever the lord of any house becomes retrograde or exalted because it is multiplied by three, it gives three times the result of the house. So if it is the seventh lord, it will give three marriages. If the seventh lord is retrograde or in his <clears throat> exaltation Rashi. The same goes for the same also goes for seventh lord in Un Rashi, seventh lord Varguttam, seventh lord in Mulutriko, which will be multiplied by two, that will give two marriages. The division principle works in both ways. When the seventh lord is combust, when the seventh lord is debilitated, it is divided by two, which generally also indicates multiple marriages. This happens when the division by two application is happening and the planet is situated with, conjoined with malefic. In that scenario, divided by two, how it works, the first relationship abruptly breaks and another relationship starts. In the other hand, when the seventh lord is combust or debilitated, but conjoined with a benefic planet, in this particular scenario, division by two happens in such a way that person gets married once in their life only. But because of some reason or the other, there is gap, there is distance, there is coldness between the couple. Both of the couple, rather than going on the path of the life together, what is expected from a couple, go on to have separate lives. And they start living as friends only. This is my own research. 
which i have taken out from the books of our sages by deeply understanding the principles of longevity estimation that i have been teaching since long in my first course on jyotish praram four courses that i have done on marriage even in normal courses such as predicting through class 6 predicting horoscope for newbies etc that i have done in 2018 19 20 21 now 2022 i have discussed in detail about these principles so this is my prime principle that i see for marriage and you see in cases when there is more than one marriage more than three or four marriages also what you will find is you say seventh lord is exalted and is conjoined with a retrograde planet so here what is happening seventh lord is exalted that is multiplied by 3 and that is conjoined with a retrograde planet that is multiplied by 3 plus 3 so that is basically a combination for six marriages or you can say it is a combination for six relationships a relationship where the partners are mentally emotionally socially physically dependent on each other connected to each other share each other for the period of more than one year should be considered akin to an marriage astrologically is what i have found so though i can teach you thousands of formulas thousands of principles on multiple marriage but i will teach only this particular principle right because i believe in teaching one principles which work 100% rather than teaching 20 principles which only work 50% it is a hit or miss case guess guess type of a scenario <clears throat> sorry this i take for multiple marriage now before going to the topic of extra marital and more than one partners you should understand that this combination of more than one marriage that i have told you can also convert in the combination of having multiple partners so a person can be married to someone and at the same point of time can be having a mentally physically emotionally socially financially interdependent connection with someone for more than one year and it should be considered as an affair or an extra marital whatever be the the same combination will indicate that so what is the differentiating factor the differentiating factor my friend is the fourth house fourth house is the house of virginity as sages say it i take it for chastity and morality basically speaking when there are malefics influencing the fourth house the person have no traits of morality chastity devotion dedication these words people don't know cheaters thugs people who do wrong doings right people who are into deceiving deception such people in their horoscope you will see heavily afflicted fourth house in hindi we can say aise logon ka koi deen imaan nahi hota they have no morals in life when the fourth house is afflicted because it is the house of chastity when not to consider an affliction a benefic influencing the fourth house for this technique will not afflict it so even if it is a debilitated mercury debilitated venus in the fourth house it still remains a benefic and it does not afflict it secondarily by affliction here i am only talking of naturally malefic planet not the lord of 6 at 12 houses secondarily even if there is a malefic directly influencing the fourth house by sitting in the fourth house by respecting the fourth house if the planet is having sthanbal if the malefic is exalted if the malefic is in una rashi if the malefic is varguttam then as per the words of sage parashar himself such malefics should not be considered as malefics but should be considered as benefics only so these malefics though influencing the fourth house makes the person chaste only other than this natural malefics sun mars saturn rahu influencing the fourth house 
not being in their exaltation sign mulatrikona sign own sign or in vargottam condition indicates someone who is unchaste who have no morals and ethics such people such horoscopes when mixed with the combination of more than one marriage generally indicate extramarital affair or having multiple partners primarily secondarily there is a principle of degradation degradation principle i will not say this is a multiple extramarital combination it is not this is a multiple relationship combination multiple relationship is also visiting prostitutes etc or being briefly in relationship with someone this one night stand etc all these things whatever it is all these things this is degradation so today when i was teaching the first class of my course astrology of aprakash graha and upagraha that is a three day course i have taught this degradation principle the two planets gulik the starting points of the saturn yama in a day and dhuma which is 4 degree sorry which is 5 uh, four 5 rashis and one navamsha away from the position of sun when this gulik and dhuma gulik or dhuma is connected to the seventh lord or venus in rashi or navamsha it indicates degradation degradation in the matters of marriage degradation in the matter of sexual affairs such people because it is a combination for degradation can visit prostitutes they can lure other people generally immature to be in relationship with themselves and then they exploit them people who force themselves upon others rapists etc in their horoscopes also you will see this degradation principle working brilliantly with almost 100% accuracy or at the least 98% accuracy it will be 100% accuracy provided the fact you know how to apply the principle right if you don't know how to apply then nothing can give you accuracy coming back to my point now there is one more important thing the appetite sexual appetite so generally the seventh house is seen for the matters of marriage and if the seventh house is influenced by agni tattva planet if seventh house is influenced by fiery planets mars sun and ketu they indicate huge sexual appetite now in this scenario when this mars sun or ketu influencing the seventh house they should be influencing the seventh house not the seventh lord influencing the seventh house by aspect or placement when they are in a good position once again own rashi vargotta mul trikon etc when they are in good condition rashi wise or when they are aspected by benefics such as venus and jupiter venus jupiter only not others not moon and mercury only venus jupiter when the fiery planets connected to the seventh house fiery planets mars sun and ketu when they are in good rashi own rashi mul trikon vargottam so rashi or they are aspected by jupiter and venus in this case venus should not be in the seventh house when they are influenced by jupiter and venus they for such people though they have huge sexual appetite but their sexual appetite remains under control on the other hand these fiery planets mars sun and ketu influencing the seventh house when they are in a bad rashi or when they are further afflicted by aspect or conjunction of other malefics it give uncontrollable appetite for sexuality which generally leads people to have multiple relationships multiple partners forces them into extramarital affair other than this the most classic combination of having venus in the 7th house 
is also something which gives high libido to the native and generally when this venus is also influenced by malefic planets by aspect or conjunction this does indicate person going into extramarital affair having multiple partners any type of affliction to venus at least once in life gives an extramarital affair but remember the first principle a malefic planet influencing venus mars saturn rahu if they are vargottam if they are in own rashi if they are in exaltation rashi they should not be considered as malefics exception here is saturn venus saturn condition is almost a sure shot combination for the person cheating their spouse for the person having multiple affairs and multiple relationships so that is for sure and accept for this other things have to be seen have to be seen with caution even surprisingly people think that venus rahu combination is a combination for extramarital affair having sexual thoughts etc which i have not found to be true venus rahu combination people i have seen most decent in the matter of sexuality most loyal in the matters of relationships their relationship may dry up but they will never go on a wrong path they will never go on a path of extramarital or multiple partners to spice up their sexual lives under any cost is what i have personally seen other than this the combination that i have told in the previous video this combination in navamsha mars and venus a strong combination mars in the rashi of venus venus in the rashi of mars venus in the rashi of mars expected or conjoined by mars in navamsha or in rashi so basically the rashi placement is seen in navamsha if it is a case of exchange venus in the navamsha of mars mars in the navamsha of venus combination will be completed venus in the navamsha of mars expected or conjoined by mars in this scenario the aspect or conjunction can be in d1 chart also but the position of venus going to the navamsha of mars should be in navamsha chart other than this the same relationship is also seen with respect to rashi ascendant and navamsha ascendant so rashi ascendant being taurus or libra navamsha ascendant being aries or scorpio or rashi ascendant being aries and scorpio navamsha ascendant being taurus and libra also creates this combination this combination according to sages is a combination for insatiable sexual desire which generally forces people to have multiple partners cheat in their marriage specifically for the matters of cheating as i have already told you fourth house which is the house of chastity and ethics should be highly afflicted such people are not ethical at all and they don't feel that cheating is something bad normal people like us who have good jupiter think that better than cheating it is better to die but such people inka dini man to hai nahi so such people don't fall into this category whatever come back to my point as i have told you in the previous video as well this same combination between venus and mars getting repeated in d12 and d30 so four divisional charts are there d1 d9 d12 d30 venus mars mutually connected to each other venus in the rashi of mars mars in the rashi of venus venus in the rashi of mars further being expected or conjoined by mars this happens in 3 or more than 3 of these four divisional charts of d1 d9 d12 and d30 tells it with a confirmation that this person will have extramarital affairs will have more than one relationship for sure and no one can change this fact other than this what i have seen a connection of venus moon and mercury in navamsha or mercury or venus in scorpio navamsha this combination is also an almost sure shot combination for the person to have extramarital affairs or cheat their spouses cheat their partners these are few of the combinations which i have found working in these cases of extramarital multiple partners etc 
cheating their spouses as well. Right? So you can apply these principles and can find out if this is going to happen or not. Just remember the fact that before you start applying the principles, you should be good into application. You should know how astrological principles works and what are the standard rules of applying any astrological combination. There is one more stuff. There is something more that is talked about in the books of Vedic astrology that is incest. Relationship with sister or sister-like or mother or mother-like respected people, father or father-like, brother or brother-like. So generally, relationships inside the family with cousins, etc. Such kukritya can also be seen through the horoscope. Moon and Venus both should have a mutual connection. Or Moon and Venus both in Kendras. This combination Moon and Venus mutual connection that is Moon and Venus conjoined, Moon and Venus aspecting each other. Further aspected by two malefics, further influenced by two malefics, either by aspect or by conjunction. Both, both malefics aspecting one malefic conjoined one aspecting or both conjoined. Indicates such type of illicit relationship. Not only this, fourth lord and moon, both being in kendras of the horoscope, fourth lord and moon, both getting connected, fourth lord and moon situated together, fourth lord and moon mutually aspecting each other. And this combination of mutual aspect or placement together is further influenced by two malefics as happened in the previous case. Also indicates such illicit relationship between the extended family. This topic is dealt in depth in detail through the Germany perspective which gives you another view and which confirms your findings. Right? So if you want to say it with surety that extra metal affair is there or cheating combination is there for sure, you have to take help of Germany astrology. As I always say, whenever I am talking of my favorite branch of astrology that is Germany astrology, I always say all other systems of astrology is indicative this may or may not happen. To convert that may into will, there are many principles which can confuse people regarding Gemini astrology, Gemini astrology, sure shot astrology. Gemini astrology does not work in the concept of this will happen, this can happen. It works on the concept of this will happen. In the Gemini astrology, principles are there, but it is not like in normal astrology, like all the principles are scattered. It is like structured principles which are to be applied one after another. So proper application methodology is there and once the result is indicated by Gemini astrology, it happens for sure. There is no cancellation for that. So this topic is covered in depth in Gemini astrology, which we shall cover if time permits. But this was the Parashari perspective and these principles work 100% because they are based on my experience and my analysis of thousands of horoscopes. Thank you for watching the video.